Good morning, everyone. Again, um, my name is Evribidis Zandidis, and I'm associate professor at the, and, and at the Department of Multimedia and Graphic Arts at Cyprus University of Technology, as well as director of the Semiotics and Visual Communication Research Lab that belongs to the same department. Today, I will present you a part of a bigger, wider research that was mainly initiated and contacted by my colleague Aspasia Papadima, director of the Language and Graphic Communication <coughs> Research Lab in the same department where I am as well. First of all, on behalf of her and myself, we thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to present our work and research at this fascinating conference. And as you can see, the title of the presentation is the typographic rendering of the local dialect in Cyprus, visualizing ideology in a diversified nation. The current study aims to highlight the range of typographic possibilities for written communication in a mainly verbal linguistic code, in, a, in other words, the Greek Cypriot dialect, henceforth, GCD, to demonstrate the typographic diversity found across a variety of media, including local literature, production, educational textbooks, the written communication of young people, online communication, subtitling, vernacular typography, and commercial science and advertising, and to present two new typefaces of the Greek Cypriot dialect designed to bridge ideological considerations and contradictions related to politics and national identity and to ameliorate practical difficulties encountered by Greek Cypriots when writing in their mother tongue. Cyprus is a diverse nation with a long history and rich culture and home to four major ethnic groups. Greek Cypriots, Turkish Cypriots, Armenians, and Maronites. There is a linguistic diversity whereby the official language of Cyprus are standard modern Greek, English, and Turkish, whilst the spoken language are Greek Cypriot dialect, standard modern Greek, SMG or Koine, Armenian, Cypriot Arabic, and Turkish Cypriot. In more particular, the standard modern Greek is used in schools and formal education, courts, mass media, and official texts, whilst the Greek Cypriot dialect is used in everyday language as the mother tongue of Greek Cypriots, local literary production, folk parodies, and the social media. The theoretical frameworks that embrace language, typography, ideology, and identity in this research referred to Anderson, whereby he mentions that the people that share common interests and beliefs develop a sense of belonging within an imagined community and the feeling of a collectively constructed nation. Halliday, who supports that language has a semiotic dimension that shapes our identities, ideologies, and experiences, and Eira, who believes that orthographies as visual representations of language are constructed as symbols of identity for groups delineated by language, culture, country of origin, and religion. Language use in Cyprus represents ideology under two major perspectives. Use of standard modern Greek, Hellenocentrism, on the political right Greekness of Cyprus, and use of Cypriot dialect, Cyprocentrism, on the political left non-Greekness of Cyprus. The Greek Cypriot dialect first appears in the historical record in the 14th century in the Assisis, a Frankish law code. Nowadays, there is an increasing interest in writing in the dialect. As you can see in the examples, at, at, the exa at some of the examples on the left, we counter Greek Cypriot dialect in local literary production, local textbooks at all levels of education, written communication of young people, online communication, subtitling, vernacular typography, commercial signs, and or <coughs> advertising. Writing in Greek Cypriot dialect can be a very complicated task as a result 
of the use of standard modern Greek orthography that cannot visually render the distinct sounds of Greek Cypriot dialect. Su, zu, xu, psu, chu, and chu, these verbal sounds into graphic forms have ideological and political considerations, lack of a complete commonly accepted orthographic system, lack of unicode characters, and lead to unsuccessful experiments with substandard results. Based on previous research, the most popular typographic conventions used to represent Greek Cypriot dialect and the typographic problems that arise within each convention are the following. Greek characters used in bold, whereby, as you can see in the poem excerpt on the left, bold letters create excessive focal points, inconsistency, and disrupt reading flow. We also come across Greek characters combined with diacritical marks, causing again a series of problems through which diacritics are not positioned in their proper places, they exist the height of the ascenders or the descenders of consonants, there is a congestion on the vertical axis of the text, as well as they disrupt textual homogeneity. Another attempt to visualize the dialect is by the use of Greek consonants followed by the Greek letter E. And as you can see again on the poem excerpt on the left, this solution is simple and user-friendly with no additional symbols needed. However, the system generates peculiar orthographic results. Finally, when Greek words are expressed when Greek words express partially with Latin letters as a typographic convention for the dialect, result to awkward, toy, awkward texts that also have ideological components related to the hegemonic role of the English language and Cyprus as a British colony that never got liberated. Based on previous research into the typographic representation of Greek Cypriot dialect and the preferences and attitudes of Greek Cypriots, the users, the design of the new characters took the following criteria into consideration. Exclusive use of characters from the Greek alphabet, the likely combination of Greek characters and the letter E to render distinctly Greek Cypriot sounds, simplicity and readability, design and typography factors that affect user experience, such as character recognition, design consistency and cohesion, text legibility, user friendliness, and design flow, and, fi and finally, the typographic principles to ensure an easy reading experience on the visual level, as well as in terms of the unity, rhythm, and flow of the text. Taking all of these criteria into consideration, we have developed a new diacritical symbol for consonants called dialectico, from the Greek word for dialectical, that would represent uniquely Greek Cypriot diacritical sounds. The result is a typographic system that preserves design cohesion while maintaining character recognition, as you can see in some of the examples of the words at the table here below. In what we have developed, we can actually see traces and references to the Greek letter Yoda. The diacritic dialectico affects neither counters nor the negative space between the letters, doesn't alter letter spacing or letting, doesn't interfere with the density of the text, modifies the descenders minimally, fits with the descender line of the letters and preserves the relationship with the visual icon of the original letter. This typographic proposal has been tested in two rounds of action research evaluation and was characterized as easily used, functional, and easily learned. As a consequence of the previous research, the diacritic dialectico has been introduced into two existing open source fonts, the sans serif font Carlito, renamed Carlito Enalea, and the serif font GFS Dito, 
renamed GFS Ditot and Alea. The choice of these fonts was based on the simplicity, clarity, and neutrality of their typographic design, as well as on the existing variations of their typographic parameters. The new, the new characters incorporated into Carlito and Alea, in GFS Dito and Alea promote accuracy, simplicity, and readability as basic principles of orthographic design, consistency, cohesion, and legibility, ease and design flow of the manuscript, as well as ideal reading conditions based on visual homogeneity, text rhythm, unity, and reading flow, while accommodating the preferences of Greek Cypriot users as noted in previous research. Ending the presentation of the current research, we can conclude that the differentiation of the local dialect from the official language has historically been predicated on ideological assumptions that reflect social and political positions. Typography has a semiotic power of its own and accordingly can trigger assumptions about cultural and sociopolitical values and meanings. In comparison, the use of diacritics has been studied and explored through the semiotic parameters of graphic design, as suggested by Bertin, namely shape, size, value, texture, tone, or color orientation, and placement. Targeted typographic design of the local dialect is novelty for Cyprus, as well as a controversial and complicated task because of how heavily charged language uses with ideological and political bias. Additionally, key objectives of the current research have been satisfied and we were able to resolve typographic issues identified in existing systems to create an easy and flexible writing system for the Greek Cypriot dialect, to incorporate characters of the Greek alphabet into our system in order to satisfy ideological concerns related to collective and national identity, to ensure consistency of characters, text legibility and smoothness, an effortless reading experience, and conclude with the statement that the research and design process has been based from top to bottom, not only on linguistic foundations, but has also incorporated theories of design, semiotics, and design evaluation, taking into consideration the stances, concerns, and preferences of Greek Cypriot dialect users, i.e. native Greek Cypriot speakers. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, for keeping to the time.